Each of these paintings is a record of a particular moment or a particular point in time, um, which is you know, why they're all numbered, as well as having a title, which both refers to and alludes, I guess, to the source of inspiration. I guess the interest in the process of abstraction is in the ambiguity you know, of a particular object, you know, that sort of line between the familiar and the unfamiliar. Um, so in using an abstract language, um, I guess I'm trying to put together you know, a painting or produce an object um, that can both be about a particular source, you know, which is a story for me, but also be something that you know, is totally unrelated to that, um, depending on who's looking at it. My goal is for it to be a free-floating entity. Um, you know, you might say, well, how can it be a free-floating entity if I've already, you know, in a sense, put a particular direction on the way you should think about it, you know, by using a particular title. Um, but, you know, I guess at the end of the day, that, that's a means to, I guess, encourage people to, to look at it and find what it is they want in it. Um, I don't so much think about the work as being a filter or my own filter that I'm then, you know, sharing my stories with people. What, what the ultimate goal of the work is to give people an opportunity to appreciate the subtleties, the subtle shift between one colour and the next, the way paint, you know, bleeds, you know, across the surface, um, you know, almost so that, you know, all the the marks, um, the imperfections of our daily existence is, you know, almost sort of in a way repeated, you know, through the process of painting. So, you know, we look at these paintings and they, you know, I guess at first glance you might say, oh yeah, great, you know, hard edge geometric abstraction. Um, but in using that language, I'm interested in it being un imperfect. So, you know, it almost goes against, you know, what it is that, that you might stand for if you're uh, a devout geometric abstractionist because you know they're not sort of based on real geometries they're, they're sort of based on this sort of very figurative elements that are found in, you know in my daily life and hopefully that everyone else can begin to see a relation you know in the course of their daily life. Your last three shows have all been these different shaped canvases they're, yep. they're not squares you're creating an object yep. and they, that is rooted in uh, geometric abstraction with people like Emic Noble and things like that, yep. artists like that. What's your relationship to that earlier work? Well, I guess, you know, I guess in the production of making shaped canvases, you can't sort of steer clear of the history. Uh, and it's important to, I guess, recognise the dialogue in which, you know, your practice emerges out of. Yeah, Emic Noble's a, an amazing artist. Um, you know, he was at the Dusseldorf Kunst Academy with Blinky Palermo under Joseph Boy's tuition. Um, I guess, you know, and his work was, you know, is very, was very influential, I guess, to begin with, um, just in terms of almost like the, the freedom with which he appears to use shapes and colour, you know, and it's, I guess it's a very, very particular freedom that comes out of um, you know, a really sort of rigorous practice that he's got um, and a particular process. I guess his early work is coming out of, um, you know, his own interest in the Russian constructivists, you know, Malevich and also Mondrian. Um, and I guess that, that's where my work, where I hope that, you know, if I ever solve the puzzle of making work, um, my work can eventually move on from that in the sense that, um, you know, whilst acknowledging that that's the place it comes out of, uh, it sort of seeks to, to go against that. So it's not painting to obtain a higher truth or, or painting that is in any way related to a religious experience like Mondrian, you know, might have hoped for. Yeah, no, that's, you know, my interest is I guess initially in coming from that particular history is trying to find a way to paint against what it is that they stand for um, and to do that by using their particular language you know which which is a language of I guess very sort of minimal you know at first glance 
I guess, minimal process. But you know, upon closure inspection, you know, even Mondrian, you know, paints his canvases you know, up to twenty or thirty times, and each of them is painted over years. Um, but I guess I'm sort of trying to move away from the idea that the painting can you know, be a religious experience. I'm more interested in it just expressing, I guess, the beauty of the everyday and those, you know, the rubbish, uh, the marks, you know, the graffiti on the surface. So those small things which, you know, we walk past and don't necessarily think anything of. I want to find a way to, I guess, highlight them or bring attention to, to those things so that within the monotony or monotony of you know walking to work or you know your everyday experience you know there's moments that can you know in a way transport you somewhere else and that's not necessarily through my paintings but through uh, just learning to appreciate small subtle shifts you know between one material or one surface and the next whether that's ash belt and brick you know or you know rubber and steel you know, that's sort of coming out of my own interest in Albert Camus and the myth of Sisyphus, you know, in the sense that when he talks about the absurd man, you know, the role of the, to, to truly move away from uh, suicide, you need to embrace the absurdity of your own existence. Um, and that is if you wake up every morning and walk to the bus and catch the bus, or in Camus, well, what it was a tram, you know, you catch the tram, you go to work, you work for nine hours, 10 hours a day, catch the train back home, walk back home. Um, he says within that, that, you know, if you acknowledge the absurdity of that existence, um, then you can start to, you know, see moments of beauty, you know, within the monotony of the everyday.